All right, Lou, we do have some questions. Great job. Thank you. And the first question, and it's one that happens often, is, uh, you know, okay, Lou, it's, uh, it's from Tony. It's okay, Lou, I, um, I'm looking at, uh, you know, getting started in real estate, that sort of thing. Uh, I understand that if I can find the customer and then I can find the perfect house for the customer, that's a really good way and kind of the opposite to what I've been taught. But how do I find the money to buy the house that I sell to the customer? Okay. That's a great question. Well, let's take a look at what opportunity comes down the pike. So if you were buying it from a bank, if you were buying it as a foreclosure, then about the only way you can buy those properties is for cash. So where do you get the cash from? Well, throughout my whole career, I've gotten the, whenever I needed cash to be able to do a deal, I've been able to get that money from private money sources. So that means someone's IRA, 401k or personal funds right out of their checkbook. And they've been interested in lending to me for a very good reason, for actually several reasons. One is that they love the idea of their money being used to help a deserving family end up with home ownership. So Tony, one of the things I do when I'm talking to a potential lender is I talk to them about what we do. We help people to end up with home ownership, regardless of credit or financial background. So lenders absolutely love the idea of doing good while doing well. We give them the book and another thing, now that's for cash deals. And then when I've got a property that I want to buy and I find out that it has existing financing on there, one of the things I want to do is incentivize the seller, pay them more for the property if they'll allow me to take over the existing financing on the property. Now we all know that money costs money. You don't get money for free typically. So what happens is that when I'm going to the bank, I may have to pay three points to the lender to be able to purchase, purchase that money, borrow that money is what you're really doing. But when you do that, that's their profit center. They get those points. Well, I would love to give that to the seller. And so what I teach you to do is what to say and how to say it to be able to give that to the seller and actually increase your offer price on the property because you would have been spending that money anyway. Now you're giving it to the seller. And since our money typically comes from hard money sources, then there's an expense to that. Well, we can give that to the seller if they allow us to take over their existing finance. Now, another way that we do it is if they have equity in the property. So let's say that, you know, by the time we do our cost to sell worksheet, we come up with a final offer price on the property and the property's worth more and they've got a spread. They've got money coming to them. That's called equity. Well, many times sellers don't actually need that money right now. And, Sometimes they'll let that money actually ride with the deal. In other words, that you could pay them later or you could pay them annual payments or semi-annual payments or quarterly payments or monthly payments. Whatever works for that seller, whatever helps them is what we're willing to do. And as long as we can scratch that itch, as long as we can solve that problem that they might have, then they're excited to give us the opportunity to do that. And of course they have security in the property as well. So there's a reason for them to work with you on allowing you to borrow, so to speak, their equity from the property and actually earn an income off of that. So Tony, that's a great question. And absolutely positively, I do not go to banks and I do not qualify for loans. So that might surprise some people to hear that, but actually that's exactly, I have a clean record from, from day one of buying rental property, even my first property that I purchased at 18 years old, all the way through to today. I've never been to the bank. I've never qualified for a loan on a single family or small multifamily property. And the reason is I found out that the seller could be the bank. So Tony, that was an awesome question. And I love 
when I can show others that the seller can be the bank. By the way, the seller loves it too, because they love that additional payment that comes in every month that helps them with their bills and other expenses.